Hello everyone, welcome to another lecture of Rob 206 microcontrollers with lab. In this lecture we are going to consider another example of designing a sequential logic circuit. The example is for a vending machine. So we want to design the control circuit for a vending machine with the following specifications. Over here we have the specification provided for us. The vending machine accepts nickels which stands n which stands for 5 cents and dimes d which stands for 10 cents so only two kind of coins are accepted 5 and 10 cents when the machine has received 15 cents it will deliver a package of candy if the amount of the money which is inserted to the machine is more than what is required if too much money has been added the machine will return the difference as well after delivering the candy and when the candy has been released, the release mechanism brings the circuit back to the original starting state. So this is indeed the specification that we have received. We can insert a coin into the machine, 5 cents, 10 cents. And once it reaches 15 or more, a candy will be delivered, released, and also the remaining change will be also returned to the user. Okay, so here we have a review or overview of the problem we need to understand the problem and add specifications if needed then we need to construct a state diagram after that a state table will be built and then we will have the state encoding once we are done with the state encoding we select the type of the d flip of the flip flop in it here we will use the d, d type flip flop and then we will derive the input equations to the flip flops and also the output equations and we will draw the diagram and the last step will be the verification as usual. So let's understand the problem in more details. Here we have the vending, vending machine's sequential circuit. We have two inputs, the N and D, which stand for the nickel and dime coins. And we have two outputs. Y is for releasing the candy mechanism and Z is for returning the change. So if there is more than uh, needed money inserted into the system it will return the change the outputs are considered as y and z and the inputs are n and d and remember that n stands for five cents and d stands for ten cents all right another thing that we have here is that only one of the inputs n or d will be asserted at one time we cannot insert two coins at the same time so n or d or none we will never have them together and n and d will be asserted for only one clock cycle when a coin has been inserted and we will not receive any smaller coin or any other type of coin z equal to zero means that there is no change and z equal to one means that we need to return five cents the system needs to return five cents to the user here we have the state diagram in the more model where the output depends on the state only we start from the initial state s0 where we assume that no money is provided and the the, as a result the machine doesn't need to deliver any candy and it doesn't need to return any change so the output is equal to zero zero and we are in state s zero then we assume that a coin of five cents is inserted we switch to state s1 we have five cents accumulated but since it is less than 15 we don't deliver any candy and we don't return any change and as long as nothing is inserted, nothing more is inser inserted, we stay in S S1. If another 5 cents is provided, we will switch to S2, meaning that we have 10 cents accumulated. But still, since it's smaller than 15, no candy will be delivered and no change will be provided. We have 10 cents. If we receive another 5 cents, we will switch to a state, S3. And in S3, we have mean it means that we have already received 15 cents. So we will deliver a candy. But since it's just 15 cents, we don't need to return any change. So the return change will be equal to zero. But the state will automatically 
change into S0. And you can consider uh, the, the case where we have 5 cents already accumulated and we receive another 10 cents. We move to S3 again. And if we are already in S2 where we have 10 cents and we receive another 10 cents, it means that here we have 20 cents received and therefore we need to release a candy and return the change, which is 5 cents. And after doing that, we automatically need to switch back to S0 because we have nothing to do at that state. And you can see here the convention. Yeah? SI is the name of the state, Y and Z is the form in which we have the output and ND means that we have the inputs and we know that for ND we will have these possible cases. But N and D both one will not happen. So only three possible cases will happen. So in this case, in the Moore model, you can see that we need five states. It requires five states. On the other hand, for the same system, we can have the MIDI model. In the MIDI, MIDI model, we, if we are in state S0, meaning that we have not received any money or accumulated money is equal to zero. So we'll stay there and we will wait for the coin to be inserted. If we receive five cents, we will switch to S1. But since we didn't have anything initially in terms of the accumulated money, no candy will be delivered and no change will be returned. We are in S1, meaning that we have five cents accumulated. Accumulated. If we receive another five cents, we will switch to S2 where we have 10 cents. And again, no candy will be delivered and no change will be returned as well. If we are in S1 and we receive 10 cents, in total, we'll have 15 cents. So one candy will be delivered and no change will be returned. And we will switch back to S0, as you can see here. And if we are in S2, meaning that we already had 10 cents, if we receive five cents, in total, we will have 15 cents. So one candy will be delivered and no change will be returned. But if we are in S2, so we already have indeed 10 cents accumulated and we receive another 10 cents here. In total, we'll have 20 cents. So we need to deliver a candy and return five cents. So output will be equal to one, one. And finally, if we are initially in S0 and we receive 10 cents, we will switch to S2 without releasing any candy and without returning any change. So you can see that in this case, for the MIDI model, we will have only three states. The number of states decreases to three compared to five states that we had for the Moore model. And the convention is also shown here. Inside the circle, we show the name of the state. And then on the uh, directed arrow, we have the input ND and output YZ. Okay. So for the MIDI model, where we have only three states available, we need to complete the state diagram. You can see that not all the possible inputs are considered here. When we are in S0, we have considered D, and this D means that we have not N and D. We have considered N, so N means that N not D, but we haven't considered not N not D. And obviously we remain at the same state with outputs equal to zero and zero. So we need to consider that for all the states and you can see that this will be the case. So not n not d output will be equal to zero zero, not n not d output will be equal to zero zero. And similarly with not n not d will remain at zero at the same state with the output equal to zero and zero. So we have the complete state diagram here. The next step would be to fill a state table for the MIDI machine. We have the present state here, the inputs D and N, and then the next state and finally the outputs. So this, this truth table or state table is filled referring to the state diagram that we have here. I'm not going to 
have a look at all the entries here we have s0 s1 s2 something to consider here is this part of the state table s3 is considered here but you can see that we don't have s3 as a state here so this is just a, a part of the state table which will not be considered in it but since we are going to use two flip-flops we have two state variables we will have this s3 case anyways but it will not be used in our system so again with two flip-flops we will have up to four states but here we will use only three of them another thing to consider here is that the input equal to one one that we have in these three cases for the next state we will have we have x and also for the outputs so this is because this case will not happen we will never have one one as the input because we cannot insert two coins at the same time okay so the state table is like this you can double check it with the state diagram if you want the next uh, step would be to go through the state encoding again we have three states we need to use two flip flops a and b we will use the following encoding for the states for s0 we'll use 00, 0 for s1 0, 01 and for s2 10 and then we will have the encoded state table again this the, the, the thing that we are using here this type of encoding is uh, depends on the designer yeah? you can use any other form for example you can say s0 is equal to 11 s1 is equal to 10 and s2 is equal to 01 if you wish okay but then according to that your table will be also different here we have the encoded state table the original one is given on the right side on the left side and on the right side we have the encoded state table for the present state and next states you can see that now the the numerical values are used 0 0 for s0 0 1 for s2 and so on and so forth so we have the table updated state table the next step is to determine the type of the flip flop we will use the d type flip flop for a and b there will be two flip flops it is possible to use another different kind of flip flops in it such as jk sr and t these type of flip flops are not covered yet in our lectures uh, i will explain them later to you but for now we will just stick to the d type flip flop now the next step is to derive the inputs to the flip flops and also the output equation so we will have two flip flops a and b we already de determined that we are going to use the d type flip flops we need to determine the input equation for the d type flip flops and also for the output the combination circuits that we are going to obtain here could be implemented in different ways we can use the minimized sop sum of products or we can use decoders and or gates or we can use the multiplexers as we know that combination circuits could be implemented in different ways in this example we will use the sop for which we will use the k maps to do the optimization here we have the state table given provided again and for d a and db the inputs to the uh, to the philip philips we are using the carno maps so uh, four by four carno map is used you can check that it is filled according to the state table here and we have obtained the d a and db the expressions for the input of the a and b philip philips based on the inputs and also the current state on the other hand for the outputs y and z we also refer to the same state table and fill the Carnot maps and the expressions for the outputs are also obtained as you can see here and finally we can have the implementation using the expressions that we have obtained for da db y and z d and n are the inputs y and z are the outputs and a and b are the output of the flip flops which are indeed determining the state for us they are the state variables 
and you can see that the circuit schematic diagram is obtained in this way now as the last step we can go through the verification for the verification you can do it manually in the, you by providing different type of inputs for n and d you can start obviously with not n not d assume that initially we are in the a and b equal to zero zero and check what happens according to the circuit diagram that we have here to the outputs and also to the next states d a and d b and this should indeed uh, be the same what you get here should be the same as what we had in the specification part all right so now that we have gone through the vending machine example over here it's your turn to to work on a, uh, on a similar example in it which is about the vending machine again but the specifications are a bit different so you need to find the state machine diagram for the following electronic vending machine specification the vending machine says soda for 1.5 per bottle. The machine accepts only one dollar and twenty-five cent, one dollar bill and twenty-five cent coins. So D and Q would be the inputs. And when the sum of money is greater than 1.5, which could happen when, when you insert two one dollar bills, the machine will return the change in the coin return. So two quarters will be returned. When 1.5 has been paid, the machine lights an LED to indicate that the soda flavor may be selected and the choices by the push button are C for cola, L for lemon and O for orange and R for root beer. Okay, So there are different four, four options in it. And when one push button is pushed, the selected soda will be dispensed and the machine will return to its initial state and obviously the remaining coin will be also returned beforehand. So here we have the initial indeed uh, state diagram. Initially we are here at the reset, meaning that we haven't the machine hasn't received any coin yet. If it receives Q, it will switch to the next state with 25 cents. So in terms of the output, it doesn't need to return any uh, change and it doesn't need to deliver any soda. If we receive another queue, it will switch to the next state, 50 cents. If we don't receive anything, it will remain at the same state until there is uh, there is an input. And similarly, we can switch from 50 cents to 75 cents, from 75 to 100, from 100 to 125, and finally from 125 to 150. And once we are in 150 state, we will wait for the inputs, whether C, L, O, or R are uh, selected. And then based on that, one of the, the, one of the choices for the soda will be delivered in the yeah? You can see that this specification is not complete. For example, if we are in 125 state here, and the user inserts one coin, what will happen? We will have 225, yeah? so there is a need for another state with 225 where we switch from 125 to it if we receive D and then from there we need to deliver some coins and go back to 150 cents where we ask for the selection of the different types okay so you can see that this is not a complete let's say state diagram what you need to do is to complete this state diagram take into account all the possible cases and once you have it you can convert the state diagram into the state table and determine the number of the flip flops that you need to to construct a sequential circuit find out the input to the flip flops the outputs you after finding the expressions uh, you can implement it using the Philip Phillips and the sequential and the combinational logic circuit and at the end you can verify your design so I'm not going to do it over here in this lecture it will be some 
kind of practice for you okay all right so having gone through this example partially it means that we are at the end of the lecture thank you for watching and see you in the next lecture soon bye for